It's finally here. Drone mapping photogrammetry software for every budget. I wanted to uh, come out here real quick uh, as an addition to the uh, software that I'm going to be showing you today. I wanted to show uh, a little experiment that I've been working on. I know some people have talked about using ND filters, so there's a big uh, question as to whether they're uh, useful in mapping. So I've been using ND filters when I've been uh, making 3D models and if there's any kind of uh, shiny metal in the, in the model or uh, glass, I'll use an ND filter and it has helped cut down on the glare. But out here, there's a lot of white rock. There's new paved roads, which are white. And so it causes a lot of glare. Not to mention that when the drone goes across a tree line, then it, it changes the exposure on the camera because it gets dark. And so uh, I'm gonna do uh, two flybys today. I'm gonna uh, collect data with the, uh, with the ND filter, and then I'm gonna collect data without the ND filter. So I'll use the same settings, and then I will also fly at the same altitude. I'll be at uh, 400 feet, which is about 120 meters, I believe. So uh, let's see what happens. Oh, one more thing I wanted to share with you. If, uh, if you're a professional drone pilot like myself, and you uh, have to have insurance. So I found this app a few months ago it's a uh, on-demand insurance it's called skywatch so it's got a lot of really cool options and i'll show you uh, the features in it real quick when i'm setting up my uh, flight plan and then uh, i'll also put a link in the description below so if you want to check that out uh, feel free to it's uh, pretty useful i think uh, i think you'll find it helpful as well This is the insurance on-demand app that I was just talking about. It's called Skywatch AI, and it saved me money from the first time I used it. It gives me the ability to draw a parameter around the area that I'm going to fly. It does give you the option to choose a radius from an eighth of a mile to a half a mile. But it also lets you sign up for a month at a time. And then there's the safe flyer discount. So that's a pretty cool option. The fact that I get discounts for being safe is a real bonus for me. Okay, so the software that I want to go over today is Capturing Reality. And right here you can see this is the website, and I'll put a link in the description below. You can just go to the download tab and uh, download the demo or get a uh, three month license, which is $116 for three months. Okay, so now I'll just open up the first project. And as you can see, there's uh, three windows that are open. And if you go here to the top, it has uh, several different types of layouts that you can choose from. And depending on what it is you're going to create really depends on which layout that you will want to choose. So today I'm going to make an ortho mosaic and a DEM. A digital elevation model so I'll use this layout so just real quickly I want to tell you what some of the options are in here because if you don't understand how to maneuver through this software it can be very painful trying to learn so your first window is where your images will go in this second window or panel it has this uh, 1D's tab at the top. If you left click and hold, then you'll get other options. 
over here, this is your 3D panel. And this is a panel, like I said, you left click on the uh, panel tab and we will use some of these other options on this panel. And of course you can go to the help menu. So now anyway, I'll stay in 3D. And now I'm going to uh, import my pictures. You can do it one of two ways. You can click on input or like I normally do is drag and drop. So I have two screens, so I'm just dragging it from another screen. You can drop them anywhere in that panel and they show up right here. So I'm going to uh, open that a little more. All right, so before we get into any of the other panels or options of what you can do, I'm gonna go ahead and start this project and why it's running, then uh, I'll go over some of the other uh, options. So first, just click on alignment and align images. And so while that's aligning, I'll go through some of these other options here. And you can always see, even when you close that banner across there, you can see here at the bottom, a little green bar, it'll gradually move its way over. One of the most important things to know about this software is the settings. Everything that you're going to do has to do with the settings and the options for all of that will be down here. As you go through the process of creating a Northern Mosaic, you'll have more options that will be available. Another important thing to note is the tabs up here at the top. So after the alignment is complete, the next tab you'll come over is to reconstruction. And of course you have a lot of options up here. Some of these have to do with the 3D model process and some of them have to do with the ortho mosaic. So we'll just go over the ones that are pertinent to what I'm creating today. All right, so now uh, step one is complete and that's the sparse point cloud. Before I go any further, I wanted to point out a few things. The first step of this took three minutes and that's uh, 543 images and it took three minutes which I have to say I'm pretty impressed with. So to process it just go over to reconstruction and then click normal detail and that's when it'll process through step two. This only took uh, I think an hour and five minutes on my desktop. All right, so here we are. Step two is complete, the dense point cloud. And now I just click on texture. It'll take a little bit and it will give it the color. All right, so now that part is through. Uh, first thing I do again is go up here to the scene, click on the cameras because those get in my way. And then Next, I'll left click on this line and make my uh, boundaries where I want them. All right, now that I've got the boundary where I want it, I will go in here and on the click on create from uh, reconstruction region. I'll do that just because it'll close off, clip off all the edges around the outside. All right, now what I want to do is take this point cloud and turn it into an ortho mosaic. So I'll go over here to the reconstruction. The thing to remember about this is that there are options that will now show up in the uh, settings that will allow you to render your ortho mosaic. And also you have to uh, pick your uh, projection or your coordinate type, your datum that you're going to use. The thing is, if you don't pick the right one now, you'll have to recreate your ortho mosaic 
uh, in the correct datum or uh, projection. Also, there's another way to uh, trim your ortho mosaic. Like for instance, this part of my ortho does not need to be uh, saved because that's not actually part of the area that I wanted to map. So I can go up here to the lasso tool and just left click and hold and I can go all the way around and then it will highlight the area that I want to actually create. So then I'll click on lasso again and ortho. Okay, now that I have my ortho mosaic uh, outlined or ready to render, I want to point out this box here. Whatever color you choose right here is the color that you'll see if, if there's any uh, background that's showing. Um, the other thing to remember is come up here to info. Now this is the part I was saying that if you don't pick uh, correctly you're going to have problems later. So uh, you want to make sure that you go to info and where it says coordinate system you can double click and choose the coordinate system that you're going to use. Next, you'll hit Estimate, and if you're just working with one ortho mosaic like I am here, you'll just choose Render. If you have several ortho mosaics, you can just add to batch and then move to the next one and then render them all at one time. So I'll click Render, and then that'll take a few minutes, and then uh, I'll come back when that's done and move on. Now that the ortho mosaic has been rendered, generated, clipped, flipped, baked, whatever, it's now time to export it. Go over here to the ortho tab, to ortho projection. It'll send some statistics. So when I hit save, this little box will pop up. If you want to uh, export it in a way that is viewable, you'll need to make sure that you choose the correct options for the purpose of your ortho mosaic. I'm choosing true and it gives you a short little description and global because I want to be able to open this up in a GIS program. For me, I'll use Global Mapper or QGIS and then the projection file, true. This is the compression. If you want to know more about these options, you can, of course, go into your uh, 2Ds and left click and hold and then go down to your help. And of course, I've only been working with this software for a few weeks, so I could have easily missed some information in here but there's a lot to go through when it comes to this program. So if you have a question, please feel free to make a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. Uh, otherwise, I'll be making some more videos coming up in the next couple of weeks. I'll put all the links in the description below for the different things that I talked about in today's video.